Hello YouTube, today I'm going to be showing you how to jailbreak any Xbox 360 console using just a USB stick that you have lying around the house. So what you want to do first is just plug the USB stick into your computer and you're going to want to format it to FAT32. If you have quite a large USB stick, Windows might make it a little bit more frustrating for you to uh, just do it straight from Windows Explorer. So what I recommend you do is just go on uh, Google, search for GUI format, click on the image, uh, press keep to download it. And then what you're going to want to do is just to double click on GUI format. And once you've done that and you have your USB stick connected uh, to your PC, just make sure that you have identified the right USB stick. So mine is this 64 gigabyte USB stick here. Now you can see that if I try to format it within Explorer, it doesn't give me the option to format as FAT32, which is why I'm using the GUI format tool. And so I can see the letter here is I, so I'm just going to be very careful to select I, and I can give it any old label. Uh, I'm just going to call it Xbox. I'm going to leave quick format selected, and I'm just going to be careful to just make sure that I have uh, closed Windows Explorer. Now I'm going to hit start. OK, and there we go. We can see that it's formatted successfully. So I'm just going to close the tool now. Uh, I'm going to go to this PC. I'm going to go to the USB stick. And then for the next step, it's pretty simple. I've, I'm have i going to put a link in the description just to this uh, jailbreak pack. Everything is pre-patched already. So I'm using WinRAR here, but you can use 7-zip or just a built-in Windows Explorer if you're using Windows 11. Um, and all you're going to want to do, just drag and drop everything in here into uh, the USB drive directory. And if you have a slow USB stick like I do, it might take a minute or so just to copy everything across. So what this pack has, it has the bad update payload for the Rock Band Blitz game already set up. Um, uh, it has Aurora pre-patched for the um, USB soft mod and also has a NAND dumper pre-patched that's ready for you to use as well. So I'll literally just give it a moment just to finish copying that across. It also has XCX menu for just starting any uh, Xbox executable. Anyway, okay, so it's copied across now. I'm just going to take the USB stick out of my PC. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug it straight into my Xbox 360. So I'll just go across here. And this works for any Xbox 360 model. Doesn't matter whether it's uh, fat, whether it's slim, whether it's a Winchester. And they're all, the, the process is exactly the same for all of them. So what you want to do is you just want to plug the USB stick into the Xbox. There we go, so I've managed to put mine in. And once you've done that, so what you want to do, just go across to the games tab, select my games, and you will see here, Rock Band Blitz is an option, and also XCX menu is an option. And I should say, make sure you go into settings and uh, ensure that you don't have an internet connection set up. Make sure you don't have any ethernet set up don't have Wi-Fi set up and if you can just physically unplug the Ethernet cable as well just to avoid any ban risk. Anyway you can see that right now it's not jailbroken so obviously I can't launch XCX menu it will give me an error. Um, but what I can do is if I just select A on Rock Band Blitz just give it a moment to launch. And what you will see, there you go, is the Rock Band Blitz menu. So just tap on A to start, and you will see that it says running exploits. And now you have to play the waiting game. It can depend on... Is, is the exploit is very temperamental, just due to the way that it works, because it will, basically it works through a hash collision method. It can take a while for the right conditions to be met for the exploit to be run. So it can take anywhere from between a minute up to 20 minutes for it to be successful in my experience. Um, 
so yes, it's just a matter of playing a waiting game now. So just a few things to look out for just while you're waiting for the exploit to kick in. Uh, so as you can see here that the background you can see that the background is moving and uh, if you have haven't got your speakers muted you'll also be able to tell that there is still there'll be the music playing in the background and that's how you know that it's still running so you can see now that the background has frozen if it freezes like this what that means is that the exploit has failed and you just need to repeat the process again um, and by that I mean you just want to literally power off the Xbox 360 you want to power it back on and then you just want to go straight back to the games tab uh, to try and launch it again so what i'm doing here is i just want to show you just how long it can take sometimes for the exploit to be successful um, and just so you can see that it takes a, a couple of goes for you to finally get it to kick in you don't have to be signed into any profile so i'm just going to go ahead and hit skip sign in I'm going to go ahead back to my games. I'm going to open Rob Ramblitz again. And I'm just going to press A. I'm going to wait a little bit longer. Fingers crossed that we'll get a result this time. Let's see. Okay. I'm going to hit the A button one more time. And running exploit. And we can see that it's running. And again, it can take a <laughs> it can take a while. Uh, I recommend that you go make a coffee or something like that and come back into the room. Uh, it it can take it can really take a good twenty minutes for it to kick in. So I suppose I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about the differences between this soft mod exploit and uh, actually getting the soldering iron out and doing a physical RGH mod of the console the benefits of doing an rgh uh, hard mod is that obviously it boots into an exploited state from boot every time the latest methods uh, for doing the rgh exploit are pretty simple it's uh, literally only just two wires uh, that you need to solder onto the motherboard um, and I, I i i would wager that even with very little soldering experience you could probably get it done um certainly i didn't have much soldering experience when i did my first rgh uh, but i just bought uh, one of these little soldering practice boards from amazon just to get up to speed and just to practice with the salt just doing a little bit of soldering with surface mounted components and i was able to give it a good go after that um my fingers crossed i, I was able to uh, succeed when i rgh that console so it, it, it is very much doable uh, without any experience and you have the benefit of it booting into an exploited state from boot every time. Obviously this, this method, whilst it does allow you to use Aurora to boot, uh, for example, Xbox back, Xbox, the original Xbox backward compatible games, it allows you to back up your uh, physical games with Aurora and so on. Uh, because of how long it can take for the exploit to actually succeed um, for day-to-day -day use unless you're able to keep your Xbox 360 running 24-7 is going to quickly become quite frustrating for you to, to, to use as I'm sure you'll be experiencing. I, I think something that I find really interesting about this exploit is that Obviously, because it works on Winchester, uh, the very newest console, so you're able to dump the NAND from those consoles and you're able to open it up in whatever tool you'd like uh, to extract the key vault from it. So in case you you have a console that is banned, um, you can now unban it using a key vault from a Winchester console, which is very useful. Um, which is quite cool and of course the winchester consoles aren't exploitable with a through a hard mod method so this is the only method that you can use to run unsigned code on on those consoles um yeah so I, i'm running out of things to say uh, so i will just let it run in the background for a little bit longer 
uh, and I, I will come. We can come back to it hopefully once it's either crushed or the offer has been successful. So let's just let it run for a little bit longer. Okay, with some luck, you will see this screen. Uh, the exploit has run successfully and your CPU key will be shown to you. I've blurred mine out uh, and I advise that you don't share it with other people because it can be used to spoof their console as yours and it means that your key vault will end up getting banned. Definitely. Uh, it's a good idea to take a picture with your phone of the CPU key uh, just in case you need to use it again later on. Now you have two options. You can either launch Zal and you can physically take a picture of uh, the fuses which might come in handy later. Um, but what I'm going to recommend that you do if this is your first time running this way, just hit OK. Okay, again, it will boot you back into the dashboard, uh, and now you are in an exploited state. So I'm just going to go ahead. I'll sign into any profile. Just going to hit B. Don't want to try to connect this slide. And now you'll see if I go into my games, you can see I can. If I now when I choose, click on XCX menu, it will boot successfully. Once you're in this screen, you just want to hit RB on the controller and it will take you over to your USB. So if this is your very first time running the exploit, what I recommend you do is just make a copy of your NAND. So I'm going to click on NAND dump patch folder with A. I'm just going to press A on nandflasher.xcx. And as you'll see, it will show you this screen. Feel free to have a read of it if you like, but what you want to do now is you just want to click on X and just give it a moment to dump the NAND to your USB. Uh, it's really useful because you can open it up with lots of different tools, for example, JRunner. And what you can do is you can see whether there are any <laughs> security events that your console has been flagged for. So if there's any risk of a, a Xbox Live ban coming up. So this is, is quite interesting. If you've ever booted up the console, your console without the DVD drive attached, there is actually a counter and you'll be able to see how many times that has happened, for example. Um, it's actually quite interesting. I should probably make a different, another video on it, uh, but about just all the different ways that uh, Microsoft can sec uh, secure, put, set security flags on your console for you to be banned the next time you connect. It's mainly anti-piracy things to do with DVD drive flashing, to be honest. Anyway, so press any button to exit, which is what I've done here. And if you now have a copy of your NAND, just dump to your USB. I'm going to open XCX menu one more time. And RB again, I'm just going to show you, if you press A on Aurora patched folder, scroll down to Aurora.xcx, press A again. And I'm just going to demonstrate to you that it does work. And there are so many different tutorials for how to use Aurora online that I'm not sure if I'll be adding anything. Uh, by talking you through it. Um, who knows, maybe I'll, I'll do a different video on it in the future. But you can see now that you have you have Aurora uh, up and running. 
So you can press start to have a look at different settings uh, and so on here. I, I don't think I've actually heard of anybody being banned for using the bad update exploit as of yet. Uh, so there's probably, I don't know, I personally wouldn't mind running the ban risk and uh, going online with this, but your feelings may differ. It's quite easy to get your hands on a, on a key vault these days if the console bots get banned. Um, so yeah, so there you go guys, you have everything running, you can do it whatever you like now, you can emulate Game Boy Advance games, you can back up and run uh, Xbox 360 games, included uh, modded versions of those games if that's what you're interested in. Um, and yeah, I, I hope that that has been useful. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. It's in an exploited state now. Um, that's the first method using USB. There is another method which, to be honest, I don't think is as good using uh, a copy of American Wasteland. Still, you need a copy of the game and you need need a USB key to do it. And I don't think the success rate is is any better uh, than the Rock Band Blitz method. So I think this is a, a great way to uh, jailbreak your console and to run unsigned code. Anyway, thank you for watching, guys. I hope that's been useful to some of you. And uh, I'll see if I can upload a few other tutorials that you might find interesting if this is your first time soft modding a console. Thanks for watching.